Hey everyone, welcome back to the Masterclass Roundtable. But maybe let's talk about prayer yeah. for a minute. What did that look like when you hit the ground and, and what did you learn about God and yourself mm -hmm. as a church planner mm -hmm. when it came to prayer? It was huge for me. I can kick off. It was, yeah. um, I feel like God built my prayer life through us planting mm. the church. Mm. Like, he completely right. changed what I thought a prayer life was. So, Because wow. um, when you're getting um, doors closed, you know, mm. when you're trying to walk through doors, mm. all you've got, you guys know this, all we have is prayer. Yeah. Right? So we got told one venue in particular that we wanted to get into for one of our locations would never be an option for a church. It's yeah. like a, a gig venue, like a club. And um, and we were talking, and then Josh was like, it's not an option, because I met with the guy, and this church tried to get in there, and they couldn't get in there. And one day I was just walking along with my stroller uh, with little baby Brooks, mm -hmm. and just, I was like, over it. I'm like, nah. Mm -hmm. Come on. And so I just went and laid my hands on the building, yeah. declared it to be like the house of God. And then every time I would, you know, meet up with someone for a coffee and walk with a stroller, mm -hmm. Um, as we're meeting up, I would stop and pray. And, you know, then he does his hustling because he's a great hustler. Yeah. <laughs> he goes and chats to them. And, but now it's the Music Hall of Williamsburg. It's where yeah. we meet oh, yeah. Williamsburg. So mm. I think just God That's was amazing. growing yeah. my faith individually. Mm -hmm. And same for our first apartment. It was yeah. a no. And then I just remember reaching out my hand to the building and just praying. So um, sounds so basic, yeah. but changed right. my life, mm. prayer. Right. You realize right. how important that is. Prayer was the only yeah. thing we really had because... Yeah. We, we couldn't really speak the language, still can't. <laughs> <laughs> but Are you trying I, to learn? I, I tried to. We don't yeah. need it's to. just too hard for me. Yeah. Cantonese Mary, has like yeah. oh, nine, nine different nine tones in Cantonese. So yeah, wow. yeah. Mandarin is four. So we have, yeah. but a lot of people can speak English in Hong Kong, so that was our saving yeah. grace. Yeah, but sure. when we first landed, I kind of thought to myself, well, what do we do? So mm. I just set my alarm for four o'clock every morning. I thought I'm going to spend my first two, two hours in prayer, and so we just yeah. did that. Yeah. Uh, wow. I guess that's the spirit of C3. Amazing. And Pastor wow. Phil, he would always wake up early. So I, I said to the Lord, I'm going to do this for the first seven years. That's and uh, that seven years has now passed. <laughs> 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 but, but we did. We, no, we sleep until 11. <laughs> <laughs> now I just sleep in all day. <laughs> but we were just desperate for everything. Oh, we, so desperate. We needed people, we needed right. venue, we needed yeah, finance. finance. We just needed yeah. everything. Yeah. And, but the prayer did it all. Yeah. 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 So but it was praying the Holy Spirit because he yeah. prays right. through you. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. you know, when you try to pray, you know, you're praying for things that you want when mm -hmm. actually God... Right. No, yeah, he knows exactly more. Right. Yeah. The Lord taught me so much through that prayer because often you start praying for things you want, mm. and then after a while, you, you stop praying for things and you just allow the Holy That's Spirit right. to pray right. through right. you. Yes. That's right. And the, I guess revelation of praying in the Holy Spirit mm. yes. began to grow. You know, mm. that, that living water. Right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. It begins to, and the Holy Spirit mm. starts doing things that you don't even know. That's right. And then yeah. suddenly, out of the blue, prayers start getting answered. Yeah. 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 Some guy walks into the church and puts a big check in the offering, <laughs> you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the like spirit that. of intimidation was like heavy for it's us. Huge. Where like you, so we never saw ourselves as downtown people. And choosing, uh, we rented a car when we went there on like a scouting trip, mm -hmm. and the entire day we were driving around all the suburbs looking for where we were going to start. The textbook church planning. Yeah, spot. so it was like the intersection of yeah. like the highway and the business yeah. community, the school district, and the <coughs> median uh, income bracket. Right. And we were fighting the whole day. Yeah. Like it was like. Jess and I were kind of at each other and it wasn't right, it was weird and it yeah. was just like this, it was, it was a weird day, wasn't it? So we took the rental car back and we just, like, I, someone said to us, like, you know, just start where you mm. would normally go, like, what do you like? And I was like, oh, I like coffee and then I'd just go to the coffee shop then and start there. And so we, um, and it was downtown and so mm -hmm. we found this cool coffee shop and then we just kind of looked at each other and there was the only peace that we had for the whole day. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, let's be real, that's what it was like. Yeah. And uh, and it was like, maybe, maybe we're meant to be downtown. Right. And we're like, we're not, 
We're not it downtown really people. It's now, though, because it, like, it fits yeah. and it makes mm -hmm. sense now. But back yeah. then, it was like, we don't know cities at all. Right. Like, we don't. Right. We've ne we had never we're lived not urban in cities. Yes. Calgary, yeah. where we were in Calgary, is no, definitely not urban. Not urban. No, I'm from no. a small country town in Victoria. Mm. Wow. So, <laughs> um, so we tested it. We, like, we felt the presence of God, That's and we're right. in the cafe, and... I said, well, if we're going to do it, people are going to come to church. So we invited a guy, hypothetically, just said, hey, man. <laughs> to our church, it didn't <laughs> yeah. exist yet. We said, hey, man, we're, not, we're moving in, like, you know, five months. But, like, if we started a church here, would yeah. you come? And he kind of looked Jess up and down. Literally. Um, like, it was a bit <laughs> creepy. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. It was a bit creepy. Wow. But, at, a bit, but if it works, you know. Bit, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a good, whatever you got. Like, you know, babe, that top's not low enough for <laughs> church plan to, like, win people. <laughs> No. Yeah, so and uh, so uh, he said, yeah, he I did, would. Yeah. He yeah. said if, if it was your church, if you guys were the one doing it, I would come. I would come check it out. Mm. And, and that, like, that for us, that was like a Jacob, fleet, like like <coughs> a, what is it, Gideon's Fleece, or yeah. whatever that mm -hmm. fleece thing is. Amazing. I love whatever that fleece thing is. Whatever that fleece thing is. Also reading the word. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the Bible? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Right. You got to do that too. Yeah. 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 But you yeah. talked about peace. Right. Mm. It's like, yeah. peace as right. your indicator on yeah. which direction to go that's and I, right. that's it's been true. so key for us when you said that I was like yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because we've moved at times in mm. different decisions um, and it, peace hasn't been our indicator mm. yeah. and it hasn't worked mm. yeah. and so now we're just we were talking about it recently just learning from that mm -hmm. always just wait for the peace of God yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, true. it's been huge that's right being yeah. patient with patient. that yeah. Yeah. God's got a perfect timing yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah we it's true I think in terms of like the dynamic of marriage, it's so it's so important to be kind of real for all the church planners mm -hmm. watching that yes. that fighting and that that intensity is very yeah. normal because I think part of the, well the biggest opposition is going to be against your marriage and your family. Mm -hmm. oh, it's true. It's so and the key to the church is the health of our relationship, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so yeah, early on we were like at each other, and mm -hmm. and uh, I just felt like the walls of New York like closing in on me. Yeah, like, you feel I, small. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm trapped. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. And so then, but then I didn't know how to deal with that and I can't deal with it in my mm -hmm. own flesh. And so I, that would then really uh, fall upon Georgie and, and Brooks and, mm. and our family. And so Georgie, in her wisdom, was like, get out of here, get out of the apartment, go pray. Um, but it was in that moment that um, everything changed. It was really early on, but I felt like the mm. pressure of like trying to save the city in a day, mm. even though it's a ridiculous yeah. thought, it's yeah. kind right. of like that's what yeah. know, vision, faith, right. like you yeah. gotta like, yes. you gotta win everyone in a moment. Because you have all these years and then you land. Yeah. yeah. And it's mm. like the build up, these mm. years right. of a vision. Because right. yeah. yeah. so I think a lot of church planners feel that, or yeah. you're comparing yourself to other launches or other churches. Mm. Yeah. And mm. So you have all these voices in your head telling yeah. you what you should be doing or could be doing or where right. you should be up to. But it's so powerful just, uh, just started circling blocks in, in New York and praying right. and the Holy Spirit told me two things. It'll be according to your prayer and one divine connection a day. Mm. And then that just radically changed my life and I still right. live that way today. Yeah, you still do it, right? Yeah, yeah. so then I, thought, I was like, that's, that's genius. First of all, it's like, of course, God's going to build his church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's right. going to pray through me like you guys were saying mm -hmm. and learning just to request what he wants mm -hmm. and line up to right. his will for the church. And then the other thing was, that's 365 people I personally can impact right. without any team. Yeah. yeah. And Because I was pretty defeated. We didn't have a team. And I was like, oh, man, how are we going to do this? And then mm -hmm. sure enough, the next day, we, it was freezing cold in New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brooks was in the stroller. And we're just Aussie family. And all these kids have these like big sleeping bags over them for the cold. But we didn't realize you needed that for your kids. So mm -hmm. Brooks is like... You know, we had like a light blanket. Like, where do I get those things? Where do I get those things? So we went to a baby store and we bought it, but there was where we had our first divine connection. Yeah. Wow. This amazing girl named Damaris, and she's still in our church on our wow. team, uh, so you know, cool. five years, six years later. But through her, like, it, not even an exaggeration, probably 500 people are in our church wow. or more mm. just from that first angels. connection. Wow. Wow. And a few weeks wow. ago, mm. we announced our new worship pastor, and it dawned on me as I was speaking and announcing it. Mm and said, how did you come to church? And he said, oh, my brother invited me, and my brother was invited by Aaron, who is the 
brother of Damaris, who was the first divine connection. We met in the baby store. What so this is, this is four years, Something. five years yeah. later. Yeah. And I just said to the whole church, listen, this is what God can do. Yeah. Like that first yeah. connection, I'm now announcing our new worship pastor, wow. yeah. came from that first mm, connection. And the whole church Amazing. obviously just erupted. Because here's the thing, and I, like... I got my husband back in that moment when God said, I was like, thank mm-hmm. you, Jesus, because mm-hmm. like he told Josh, one divine connection and pray. Right. So yeah. this visionary just knew, oh, I could do my one divine connection at breakfast time. And then he's free to like pray and dream mm-hmm. and be a dad yeah. to his new baby. Yeah. And I was like, thank so you, good. Jesus. <laughs> um, but it's so, it's so true that we can feel like when we church plant that we have to have everything lined up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, Exactly. We have to have right. our kids' ministry sorted and yeah. this mm-hmm. ministry and this yeah. and this. And I really loved um, coming to something that wasn't established and just mm-hmm. focusing on people. And I think for any church planters watching, it's so important, right, to, for them to know you don't need all those ducks lined up. No. Right. Focus on the one divine connection. Mm-hmm. Focus on prayer, um, people yeah. and prayer. Yeah. Mm. Did you, That's awesome. Did you guys feel like a specific, unique strategy at some point like to reach people um wouldn't i think for us it's always been about just one person at a time you know yeah. before we came over Tell the dr kim story. yeah um so uh obviously the the largest church in the, in the world is the one uh, with dr young Yi cho mm-hmm. in um korea and so dr kim was speaking at the every woman conference and um, mm-hmm. i got to drive her around and and when she found out that we were going to Hong Kong, I remember um, she said to her translator, who was then translating to me, um, she basically just said in, in a nutshell, uh, just focus on the one. Mm. Mm. Just yeah. focus on just one person at a time. Amazing. So this is a person that passes the largest church in the world. And she says, just focus Amen. on one person yeah, at a time. Great. And God will bring those people. Yeah, yeah. So and, that's, good. You know, and that's really God doing it for you then, isn't yeah. it? You don't yeah. have to right. try to make things happen. Yeah. Right. Let him do it for you. So good. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a funny story when we first arrived. We wanted to do a little outreach in one of the universities. And we spent all this money setting everything up. And not one person from that university ended up coming to the church yeah. and, and the wow. opening. Mm. But there was one person there who was also performing and uh, he was just walking around the campus, strumming away on his guitar and, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of people make a little bit of fun of him. Anyway, he gets up to sing and he has this amazing voice. He started singing um, um, Robbie Man. Williams, Sorry, Robbie Better Williams, Man. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as we heard him, we thought he could be our worship pastor. Wow. Yes. So we, we, we started targeting him and we said, hey, do you need a lift home? <laughs> so we got him in the car. You didn't have to. We had 30 to 40 minutes with him in the car and then our next step was, okay, we'll take you out for coffee and buy you breakfast or something. Mm. So we met with him again and we had two or three of those connections and then we said, look, and, look we're, we're looking for someone to, mm. to lead the music in one of our gigs. And we said gigs. And he came That's along and, and to cut a long story short, he is now our worship pastor today. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And, he'd, never, yeah. he'd never led worship before. He had actually been looking for a church. He'd gone to a number of churches. And so when he came to ours, I remember we did the altar call and, um, and he said to me afterwards, when you said, uh, come home, he said, mm. that, was, that was for me. Oh. I thought, oh, wow. that was yeah. for me. The thing is, wow. he was never meant to be at that university gig because mm. when his friend heard that it was mm. a Christian thing that was happening, his friend calls him up, his name's Jerry, and he said, hey, Jerry, I don't do Christian gigs, you know, you need to step in for me and do this. So he wasn't even meant to be there. So that's wow. a divine yeah. God moment. That's and right. it's through him that um, he's built our worship team. We have amazing professionals, yeah. some of them professional. Just about um, the whole band of professionals. Professional but he, <laughs> he, would, he would turn yeah. up every Sunday. He'd have amazing. to come straight from his gigs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and look, he, at the beginning, he wasn't really saved. And <laughs> who knows where he had been. And <laughs> you could smell the whiskey on him and all sorts of things. But he just, he just led. Yeah. And week after week, month after month, he got saved. And yeah. Now he's just a great young man. He's he married. His he's wife got in kids. the church. Yeah. Um, you know, his great kids are in the church. And you know, he he grew up without a father, so he mm-hmm. never had any of that. And yeah. so he is so grateful now that he has that for his children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, I think what's important is that you know, for certain people, you never put a time limit on them yeah. to to change or right. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just let yeah. God do it. Yeah, that's right. Because there was definitely, I mean, there was a couple of people that came to our church and. Um, they said, we can't believe you know, you've got this person up on stage. He smells of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah. if that person 
will see him now, he's a different person. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 He's completely right. different. Yeah. And yeah. He's, a, he's a God transformation. Yeah. Really Two or three is. years ago, we had a visiting Seafree pastor come through. And he was just amazed at this guy's voice. Mm. And he, he turned to us and said, hey, where do I get one of them? <laughs> and we said, they don't come into the church like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they come yeah. pretty broken. He's, he's five or six years. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So what would you guys say is the toughest part of planting a church? Toughest part? I don't know, there's a lot of tough parts. I think for me, it's probably the comparison thing. Mm. We've talked about a lot of great stories at this table, a lot of really encouraging stories. <clears throat> but there's people that you sitting there <clears throat> and you don't have that worship leader that walks through the doors. You don't have that divine connection, mm. a place. You go to a coffee shop and the person doesn't want to come to church. So I think the toughest part for me has been to make sure that I am true to our own journey yeah. and making sure that mm. I am following just what God asks us to do yeah. and not comparing to anybody else's story because um, every journey is different and maybe... You're not, we're not supposed to have the same journey as somebody else, yeah. I guess. Yeah, so comparison's huge. Like, huge. And one story might give you an indication of the way, um, but it's uh, a really difficult thing is even making the right decisions and mm -hmm. second-guessing, like, which is kind of like, a, it feels like a small thing, mm -hmm. but yeah. right. to continually have to navigate so decision-making is right. what you kind of have to do, but then every time you're ready to make a decision, you second guess because oh, wow. I don't because it never looks like what Wayne and Mary what it looked like for you. And right. then when you're facing your challenges, Goliath it's doesn't true. seem to wear the same clothes every time. Mm. And it makes so much sense like, looking exactly. back, yeah. but when yeah. you're looking forward, it's so blurry and confusing. But know, then everybody's so looking to you to make a decision, and yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, yeah, and we need to. And that's kind of what leadership is. Yeah. Sequence of mm. And it's decisions. interesting with the social mm -hmm. media aspect now because right. you really are so exposed to what everyone's doing right now across yeah. right. the world. So we really made a conscious decision to not look at social media early days. We just mm. sort of talked to each other and went, we're going to put our head down, that's not, so not care what anyone else is doing, not mm. worry about that. And it, you know, because so often it's like, you can be feeling great yeah. and then you open right. social media and you feel so <laughs> yeah. terrible about yeah. it. And God's yeah. like, no, don't look at it, just look at me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so for us that really helped. Um, right. And we used it to get the word out about our church, but we didn't mm -hmm. look at a lot of other, of what was going on. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, so really I think that helped so because yeah. It's, yeah. it's crippling. It crippled yeah. me yeah. seeing mm -hmm. how amazing everyone yeah. else is. Yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. So. Yeah, I think also, just remaining um, in Christ and actually just being a Christian. Being a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Right now, because I think it's, it so easily can turn into just a leadership exercise, or right. yeah, that's true. Um, but really, just staying true to the gospel and and staying true to our identity in Christ, because mm -hmm. all of mm -hmm. all of the church culture mm -hmm. and what God wants in our church flows out of our relationship with Christ. Mm. Right. And it's just so easy to get our eyes on other things and yeah. things we need to do and people we need to raise up and everything right. else. But really, uh, it's, it's really just about our connection to Christ. So I think mm. that's been mm. um, both on a positive side mm. really helpful for, for me personally to just stay focused on that, but also difficult when in times I haven't. I right. mean, you're busy and it's not mm. because you don't want to you know, stay focused on Christ. You just feel like this pull yeah, in all these yeah, different yeah. directions. Right. But really, I just think uh, not losing sight of who Christ is mm -hmm. and why he's called you to do this and always keeping that the main thing mm -hmm. because our job is really just to point people to Jesus okay. and help them see who they are in Christ. But we could just be building our thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and all, all, that, all that we build could just fall to nothing right. unless mm -hmm. we really build on the eternal thing. So yeah. I think staying focused. Right. Yeah, it's so inspiring for the congregation to see their leaders' Christianity. Like, yeah. I think that's... It's, it's everything. Yeah. yeah. It's but, everything. but we think maybe through our filter and our perspective, oh, they're inspired by, you know, a, a message or inspired by the mm. vision. Or, mm. But really, you know, they got, they got bills and job mm. and, you know, stuff right. at home and they're just trying to make it through life. Yeah. And so 
we're out here in our church culture and our little bubble, but they're just like I don't. They're not really connecting the mm. dots. Mm. Yeah. Like like your story with the with the worship leader, it was a journey of grace mm. of just right. continually showing him the grace of mm. God yeah. and, and trusting that the grace of God would bring the transformation. Yeah. Right. And whatever it ended up, whether he turned into a worship leader or not, mm. who cares? Yeah. As long as he knows Jesus. Mm. The, the byproduct, as you know, yeah. he he's going to serve God through his yeah. gift. Mm. Right. Um, so I, I, I just think that that can be missed sometimes. It's so yeah. true. We can get caught up in what the task is That's and true, yeah. um, rather than just... And because life flows out, that living water, that mm, river yeah. flows out mm. of us and it, it will grow right. and the church mm. will be built, right? right? But it's when we're focusing on the wrong thing that mm. it stops that flow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Well, this has been amazing, I thought. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for mm -hmm. um, talking mm -hmm. um, about your church planning stories. And I know so many people are going to be impacted. So we've really loved um, being with you today and um, we'll see you next time at the Masterclass Roundtable. Thank you.